In this section, we're going to be talking about solving absolute value equations. Now, the big idea about absolute value is that it measures the distance from zero. And as long as we remember that absolute value measures distance, we should be okay in terms of understanding some of these expressions. Now, as long as we have a non-negative value of b, here are two major statements that we have about how we set up and solve absolute value equations. If you have an absolute value equal to a number, then the only way you get this number is if the expression inside a equals that number or if the expression inside is equal to the opposite of that value. And then if we have two absolute values that are equal to each other, the only way this can happen is if these guys are the exact same number or if they are opposite of each other. Now remember, absolute value measures distance. So if this were, say, the absolute value of 7, right? then this would have to be the absolute value of seven or negative seven because they would both be seven units away from zero. Remember, absolute value measures distance and it always returns a non-negative value. It doesn't change the side of what's inside. It just returns the positive value of that. Let's look at this first example here. We have <clears throat> the absolute value of x is equal to five. And so I want you to think about what this would look like if I just wrote the absolute value is equal to five, and then you had to fill in the blank with a number that would make that a true statement. Well, you've got two options here. You could plug in five, and the absolute value of five gives you five, but there is another way that we could answer this. There is another value that we could plug into this absolute value, and that would be negative five. Either of these numbers will be exactly five units away from zero when you look at this on the number line. And applying this first uh, step that we have, or the first rule, if the absolute value is equal to a number, then we have these two options. Either the value inside the expression is equal to that number, five, or the other option is that whatever's inside the absolute value has to equal the opposite of that, negative five. So what you're going to find out is that, is that in a lot of these absolute value equations, we get two solutions. So here we get x is equal to 5 and x equals negative 5. And think about what this looks like on a number line, just so you can get an idea about location and absolute value and all that jazz. So here we go. We have 0. And this question is really asking what numbers are five units away from zero. So you can go over here to the right, and the number five is five units away. You can also travel five units to the left to negative five and also get something true. So when I say the absolute value of a number is five, you can go five in either direction and where you land, that will be your solutions. Now let's look at this next example. I have the absolute value of x minus 9 is equal to 3. And here's what that means to me. This absolute value has to be by itself first and foremost for any of these absolute value equations that we're seeing in this section and for the absolute value inequalities that we're going to be seeing in the next section, you must have the absolute value by itself first. So when will the absolute value equal 3? Well, I like to think about it this way. If I cover this up, right, what could be inside the absolute value? What number would have an absolute value of 3? Well, there are two numbers. Uh, 3 would work, also negative 3. And so that leads us to our two equations to solve. So we know that the expression inside has to either equal 3, or the other option is that the expression inside has to equal negative 3. Right? So you want your distance to be 3 units away from 0 which means you will either land at positive 3 if you go over here, or negative 3 if you go to the uh, left side. And then you take each of these inequalities and you solve them, or each of these equations, excuse me, and solve them. So we add 9 to both sides. And so we have x is equal to 12. And what you're going to notice here that when you solve these absolute value equations and you break them down into the two pieces, the steps you take to solve will be the same for both equations. So just like I added 9 on both sides here, I'm going to add 9 on both sides over here. So x is equal to 
positive 6. Now, so there we have our two solutions, 12 and 6. Now, something that we're going to be seeing a little bit later this semester is going to be looking, we'll be looking at the graphs of absolute values. So to get an idea about what this looks like, okay, so if I were to graph this, the absolute value has a V-shape, and with this x minus 9, he'd be all the way over here at positive 9, and his shape, in case you might remember that, his shape is a V-shape like that. If I were to graph this, this is like graphing y equals 3, and so that's going to be something right here, and it's just going to be this horizontal line. And what we're looking at, we're trying to solve this absolute value of the equation, we're looking for those intersection points, and we see that we have two intersection points. One of these is going to be right here at 6, and the other one is going to happen at 12. Now, clearly this graph is not to scale, but you kind of get an idea about what's going on. So when can this absolute value equal 3? In two spots, 6 and 12. 